Huh, back to the roost. Coloratura disassembled. Oh yeah, we gotta go after the assassins next. Uh, yeah, I'll take this Jolter with me. There are several ways of leading people into a trap. One is to cut off their escape route, making them think their current path is the only way forward. Another is to make them think their current path is the way they should go forward, and stop them from considering other paths as options. I wonder which trap he will fall for. Not that it makes any difference now, of course. Since he's made the wrong choice right from the beginning. What's this? You say you cannot trust me? Talk about the most reasonable advice in the world. I don't have anything else to add to that. I hate to admit it, but I agree with you. The very fact that our enemy has the same servant is grounds for suspicion. Has anyone ever told you that you two have trust issues? Anyway, that doesn't matter. You still trust me, don't you, Master? And more or less... The most practical answer. Very well then, let us go and defeat the Berserker of Shinjuku so that you may trust me more. But first, let me tell you everything I know. Well, we do have a better chance of victory now that there are three of us, it's still only a chance. If we were to attack head-on, we would surely be torn apart. Yeah, you're right. Indeed. Is it really that dangerous? Jean and Arturi are both extremely powerful servants. I don't like the odds of a head-on battle either, but I can't believe that you would have no chance at all. Now, to put it simply, it's all about numbers. There are about 200 color tourists stationed in Kabu Kabukicho, and another 100 that patrol around Shinjuku on a regular basis. So 300 altogether. In other words, if we charge in head-on, we'll be greeted by 200 color tourists all at once. <laughs> Needless to say, we wouldn't last for long. Even if we servants didn't die, Master certainly would, and without him, I'm afraid the game is over. And that's not all. While these 200 color tourists are wandering Kabukicho, Kabukicho, they're listening to a song playing from loudspeakers. A song? Naturally, it's a song sung by the Berserker of Shinjuku's beloved, our heroine Christine. Every time she f finishes singing, the color tour is applauded. This repeats, all day, every day. Yikes, talk about violating labor laws. As it stands, Kabukicho is presently an impregnable fortress. And if that weren't enough, the area is a maze of similar-looking buildings, any one of which could contain a number of coloraturas. Not to mention that they can see us all clearly from atop the buildings. If we find ourselves in a situation with puppets coming at us from all sides, then it'll be the end of the line, Master, and I don't like that. I believe I've fought some patrolling puppets before. What else can you tell us about them? Oh yeah, I busted a few of them up as well, myself. I fought them more than once, too. I managed to fend them off before they brought in reinforcements. But no matter what, within 36 hours, uh, they once again number 200. Quite the phenomenon, isn't it? And here's another bit of information. The color tours assigned to patrol the area just don't just keep Kabukicho safe. They also regularly abduct people. Why is that? Oh, I think you can imagine. And that's what I know about Kabukicho. So, has anyone come up with a strategy that doesn't include attacking head-on? Uh, sniping? Hmm, sadly I doubt that even my entire long-range arsenal will be enough to take her down. In that case, I shall cut them down with my Excalibur Morgan. Unfortunately, that won't work either. Even if you obliterate all the Kabukicho, the Colorturas and Berserker would survive. Besides, I'm sure you two have noticed the abnormal abnormality that permeates all of Shinjuku. Permeates. Why can't I read today? Ugh. While I now, it may not be at the Age of Gods level, for Tokyo in 1999 there's an impossible amount of magical energy swirling about. The energy that has been pouring into the concrete buildings, to the point to where now they even harbor it. Thus I'm forced to conclude that your sacred sword can do little to wreak devastation on, on Kabukicho. Yes, I suppose you're right. Oh, so you admit you're a weakling. I guess that does take courage of sorts. I suppose you could do better with your little matchstick. It's it's more than hot enough to melt you, Ice Bitch Queen. Easy now. You stay out of this. 
I think I may have a suggestion. But first, there's something I'd like all of you to do. Bring back one color Atura without harming it. And why do you want us to do that? Kabukicho is dominated by illusions of puppets. So to see clearly, we need a puppet of our own. Ugh, what a pain. Very well then, come with me, master. There are a number of materials I need to modify it, so I'll go find those in the meantime. That shouldn't be too difficult, since the local merchants have them for sale. I'm still surprised, surprised that the Count of Monte Cristo s said that we shouldn't trust him. Perhaps he knows Archer's true identity? I mean, that guy's a puzzle in and of himself. Well, whatever. If he's going to betray us, it'll be at a crucial moment. Until then, we can keep using each other. Shh, Colorators. Yeah! Please, don't! Somebody, help me! They're... They're taking people away. I know. I know we have to stop them, but... Yeah, yeah. It's very kind of you, but don't blame me if you get caught up in a big mess. I see you're preparing for battle even as you say that. Perhaps you're kinder than you let on. Alright, it's time to capture a coloratura. We await your orders, master. All right, all right, all right. Let's see what we got here. Can't take that one back because it's cut in half. We captured a puppet and helped the people escape. Endure sounds like something the Count of Monte Cristo would say. What? What's going on? It's nothing. Master, I shall carry the collar Why don't you kill some time in the bookstore? Huh? What are you talking about? Let's get going already. Ugh, that's such a pain. Oh, for... Are you capable of anything at all other than sheer ineptitude? Where'd that come from? Welcome back. I'm all set and ready to go. Here, a coloratura. Hmm, just as I thought. 
So you, so if you knew, so you knew that when you made us carry it, what a depraved little man you are. I figured it would help just knowing what sort of opponent we're up against. See for yourself what's beneath its face. The hell? What is that? That's a human brain. Not only that, the eyes and nerves are all human too. Master, I encourage you not to look too closely. You won't soon forget this sight. Now do you understand, Gabriel? That berserker is turning people into puppets. First, he strips them of their skin, then he removes their bones, leaving only some muscles and nerves, which he then packs inside an empty mannequin. When he's done, he has, new auto uh, he has a new autonomous marionette, one that sings no less. This leaves us with two questions. First, what is his goal in doing this? Second, is it possible to save these puppets? For the first question, ordinarily, one would think that humans move better than puppets. However, now that I've dismantled this one, I can see that that is not the case. The more I look at it, the more his artistic sensibilities shine through. What do you think, Leonardo da Vinci of Chaldea? Yes, I see what you mean. As much as I hate to admit it, this handiwork shows true artistry. Da Vinci, what do you mean? It is most likely based on the loathing and... How do you, how do you pronounce that? Fastidious? Loathing of human form and fast... Festidionis is thinking of non-human humans as beautiful. These two things overlap, and as a result, him creating these things is nothing but a mere hobby. So there's no meaning to them? There's no sense in expecting such a thing from a berserker, especially uh, not one quite so mad as, as him. Now the second question, is it possible to save these people? No. Once someone has been turned into a puppet, they remain a puppet until their death. For starters, the process of making them into puppets shatters their minds beyond repair. They're not alive. They are being preserved in an undead state. What hope of rescue could there be for them once they've re their very bodies have been disassembled? No, th they are very much dead and broken. A horrific crime, but since they are already beyond hope... Master, what do you think of misusing this puppet for our own ends? Misuse? Hold it. What exactly do you have in mind? I mean to plant a bomb inside of this puppet. Huh. These puppets return to Kabukicho at regular intervals. Once armed with our once our armed puppet sneaks in, kaboom! It will wreak havoc among the other puppets and give us a chance to assassinate their queen. This way we can take out the berserker of Shinjuku. It does make sense. Wait, that's Yeah, I guess that'll work. The thing that stopped that thing stopped being human a long time ago. Any semblance of who it is, used to be is gone. There's nothing more than an empty husk now. It's even worse than evil spirits and stuff like that. At least those things still have their own personalities. But this thing is completely empty. Nothing we need to concern ourselves about. Tell me, Archer Shinjuku, what is it you would have our master choose? Proof of his willingness to get his hands dirty here in Shinjuku. I assume you've heard of the expression, fight fire with fire, yes? Ah, a well-worn classic. To destroy evil, one must use a different form of evil. There's also a saying in the medical community about how poison in small doses can be a remedy. It's the same principle they gave us penicillin from blue mold and anticoagulation meds from leeches. For that matter, vets, vaccines are nothing more than poison administered in smaller doses to trigger the body's defenses, giving it protection against stronger poisons. You've already proven yourself to be more than worthy of being a master. But you have yet to demonstrate your willingness to wade through the muck that is Shinjuku to achieve our goals. So, can you push that button to detonate such a bomb? Now then, it will take some time to modify this puppet. Feel free to think it over in the meantime. Master, I, uh, suppose this won't sound very convincing since I'm not there with you, but... You always have, you always be my master, the one who reached out to me on that day. No matter what happens there in Shinjuku, that part of you will always shine forth. I'm still a long way from repaying the debt I owe you, but that much I know for certain. Thank you, Mash. Not at all. I wish there was more I could do to help. Alright, the puppet is ready to go, Master. Shall we? Let's go, Moriarty. Okay, Master. Here's the detonator. 
I'll tell you when it's the right time. And all you'll need to do is press the button. Don't worry, you won't be killing any people. Though I'm sure you'll find that a little solace. Anyway, it's time. Let's go liberate Kabukicho. Kabukicho. Empress Christine. Ooh, that's a two-parter. Okay, well... We'll pick that one up next time. So, gonna use the Coloratura to blow up the... Coloratura hideout. Yeah, I, I really don't wouldn't feel that much pity, because even if it's just using a brain to keep it alive, the personality's gone, so... To me, that's an act of mercy. But, you know, that's... That's up for debate with other people. It really sucks I had to use my command spells to beat, uh, to beat Lobo a little while back. But, it is what it is. Well, anyways, like I said, we'll pick this one up next time. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been Blade Cross EXE, part of Flash and Blades Productions, and tune in next time when we continue with Fate Grand Order. Alright, peace out.